Please, can you remind me if you'll, if you'll be so kind? Staring out into space, asking God to hear my case. Trying to think of all things past. How long will my memory last with purple angels? Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host and founder of Alzheimer's Speaks, Lori LeBay. Uh, For those of you that are new to our show, I just want to give you a little background about us. Basically, Alzheimer's Speaks is an advocacy-based company providing multiple platforms to shift our dementia care culture from crisis to comfort around the world. And we believe that by joining forces, sharing knowledge, and just having these everyday conversations about life with dementia, like we're going to do today, we're going to be able to remove the stigmas attached to memory loss and help those that are diagnosed and those um, helping those that are diagnosed live much better lives. At our core, Alzheimer's Speaks believes collaboration is the only way we're going to win this battle against dementia. And I know it's working because of all of your likes and clicks and shares with your Facebook friends your Twitter tribes, your Pinterest uh, followers, your LinkedIn colleagues. You see, by you sharing what we're doing here at Alzheimer's Speaks, both on the radio show and the website and the blog and YouTube, all of our different platforms, um, you got us recognized as the number one influencer online for Alzheimer's um, regarding, um, uh, according to Share Care and Dr. Oz, and that was just huge. And so, you know, to have that recognition of being the number one influencer online is, was just uh, beyond my wildest dreams. And, and I have to thank all of our listeners and our followers and our community at whole um, for allowing that to happen. So if you have time while you're listening today, if you can um, go ahead and just click on, um, you know, share, if you've got a Twitter account, a Facebook account, whatever it might be, and um, do your thing, because all of us have these big spheres of influences, many people we don't really know, but they're our friends and our colleagues, and they're, they're struggling with this information too, but so many people are fearful of kind of coming out of the closet um, when dealing with this. And the more information we can give them, the more normal it's going to feel. And we really need to have people feel comfortable and not ashamed of, of having to deal with this disease. So um, again, just want to thank you for that. Um, the other thing I want to mention is um, we interview a little bit of everybody here on the show. We're all about giving voice and equaling the playing field out. And so we interview people that are diagnosed with dementia. We interview family and friends who are caring for their loved ones that have a diagnosis of dementia. We interview business professionals, entrepreneurs that are coming up with new ideas. We've had Harvard Research on the show. We've had um, musicians and singers and songwriters. We've had movie directors and producers and actors on the show, authors, Um, The game is open. We want to hear what it is um, you're doing and what it is you think about this disease and how how do we solve this dilemma that is overtaking not just our country but the world in general. Uh, It is something so important, and we would love to be able to share your voice. So if you're interested in being on the show, please reach out to me at Lori, L-O-R-I, at Alzheimer's Speaks, or you can just go to www.alzheimerspeaks.com. There's a big gold button that says Contact Us. Uh, Click on that, and you'll have several different methods to to be able to reach out and, um, and talk with me on. Now, before I introduce our guest, who I'm very excited uh, to have with us today, I always like to give a shout out to a couple of different organizations. And one is the Purple Angel Project. If you're not aware of it, it is uh, the Global Purple Angel is the new symbol for dementia uh, that goes across all countries. There's no cost to utilizing this. And it is um, something that you can use as an individual and or a business. So as an individual, you can put it on your Facebook um, page, your email signature, 
things like that. As a business, you can actually use it in your promoting materials, maybe your website, your letterhead, um, just showing that you are part of this movement and this cause. The Purple Angel isn't about having all the answers. It's about having a conversation. It's about getting people to say, what is that? And opening the door to an to a honest discussion. You can find more information on the Purple Angel Project for the U.S. Um, here at Alzheimer's Speaks at our initiation uh, initiatives and projects uh, page. Uh, you'll see that right on the, the main uh, uh, tab there. <clears throat> and uh, we'd love to help you. If you're listening from another country, if you go to that page, it'll take you to the global site as well uh, because they're trademarked differently in, in the different countries. Another organization I'd like to give a shout out to is the Alzheimer's Research and Prevention Foundation. And they deal a lot with you know, helping people on a holistic fashion. So um, diet and exercise, meditation, you know, how how can these things help you um, live and thrive with the disease? Uh, one other organization I want to mention is uh, locally here in Minnesota, Health Star Home Health. Uh, they are just an incredible company doing amazing things uh, and have a true desire to help not only those diagnosed, but their families dealing with dementia. So um, that's who I want to do shout-outs to. Here on, the, on uh, Alive and Social, I do want to um, just remind you there's a couple of shows you might be interested in. One is Mortgages and BS that um, is on Thursdays at 4 o'clock. And basically, Tom Smith, who is a local mortgage expert, and um, BT, who's a radio personality, kind of banter back and forth about you know, what's the best way to finance your home and various options regarding a house and, you know, how to dress a house, how to stage a house. Um, they have all different types of conversations as well as what's going on in the news. And then Apples to Apples is a, a father and son session uh, that goes over sports. And I have to admit, I did not listen to them on Monday after our Vikings loss, and I really probably should have because I'm sure that that was uh, quite the, the hot topic there. How sad. We were just so excited to get into the Super Bowl, and once again, the, we're, we're not there. We're not there. Um, but, you know, and I know a lot of people are down on our kicker here, but uh, he was really the only guy who made points in the whole game, so, you know, we, we can't beat him up too bad on that. So anyways, let me go ahead and introduce our next guest um, today. His name is John Morehouse, and he's a singer and a, and a pianist, and he has a career that has spanned over 40 years, and he has shared the stage with some of the most famous bands and singers in the world. And so we're just really honored to have him with us. For the last 25 years of his uh, career, John has actually entered um, into the entertainment um, arena where he has gone into hundreds of senior homes and Alzheimer's adult, adult day centuries in southern Ontario. Um, and, you know, he has produced a series of six sing-alongs and uh, DVDs that are sold for seniors for music therapy recreation programs. And, um, you know, they have span across six different countries. So we're just really honored to have you with us, John. How, how are you doing up in Ontario, Ontario? Everything's going really well here. It's, I bet it's a little colder here, but is it uh, winter-like in Min Minnesota? Oh, it's very winter-like in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. We're we're in the below zero stuff going on now with the wind chills. So, <laughs> how about you? Yeah, well, we're close to Buffalo. We're uh, very close to Buffalo, and, and they're they're just getting a real big storm right now. But but it hasn't come our way quite yet. Okay. Well, we haven't got the storm. We just uh, the sun is shining, and it's nice out here. Uh, but it's cold. You wouldn't want to go for a, uh, too long of a walk in this weather. Anyways, no. anyways, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> okay. So, John, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Um, and the first one is just because you know, our audience always wants to know, um, do our um, do our guests, you know, have they had experience with dementia on a personal level? So have you had any type of dementia with uh, family or close friends? Not with family, uh, but definitely with close friends. And um, the entertainment industry is pretty uh, closely knit. Everybody knows everybody and where people are playing and where 
uh, where their careers are going. And, and sadly, uh, uh, a lot of my uh, friends and uh, people that I've worked with over the years uh, have uh, got dementia and, uh, because we're all getting a little older too. Yep. Well, and yeah, you are hearing more and more about, uh, you know, our rock and rollers that are out there that, you know, you wouldn't, you just don't picture having dementia or struggling and stuff. And, and uh, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff. No one is exempt from this disease. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. That is one, one proven fact there. Um, I'm wondering, and I'm sure our audience is too, how did your music career path change from playing in bands and bars and uh, you know, mm-hmm. and in stages to entertaining seniors for for music therapy recreation programs. Well, it it was one incident in particular. So, as you mentioned, I was pretty uh, heavily involved in in the circuit, playing the dance halls and uh, and and the nightclubs. And and um, a, a change came. I, I was home, and I got a phone call with an opportunity and it was a a, a London, Ontario orchestra leader who was also a restaurateur and also a booking agent. And his name was Johnny Downs. He gave me this, this call, John, would you be able to uh, go out to this nursing home in St. Mary's and perform for an hour? Um, I've had a cancellation. And I'd never done that before. So this would be about 25 years ago. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, I was a little worried about it because this was something totally different than what I'd been doing. And so I, I went and I, I did it. And, and, and it was just so much different to what I had been doing with the band on the road. And, uh, and that's how it started. And then I just started embracing those opportunities when they came in. Mm -hmm. It's, it's funny how our career paths just have subtle changes that have huge impact long distance, you know, uh, for us. Um, Can you tell us about some instances, you know, that you've experienced um, with music having, you know, positive effect on, on those diagnosed with Alzheimer's or other dementias? I I would imagine you've got tons of stories on that. Yeah. And and I I really observe every day something um, that, that is new. And uh, I I think one of the big things is, is uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, folks uh, get agitated because there, there's a little confusion, you know, involved in in their circumstance, and often the um, uh, activity and recreation people approach them and say, "Everything will be okay. The music's about to start," mm-hmm. and then they look up and they see I'm getting ready to to go up and start playing, and and um, uh, it, it it calms them. Uh, they become calm, they become focused and interested in what is about to happen. And, um, uh, uh, and of course, once the music does start, as long as you select the correct numbers that zero in on their kind of like power days, glory days, the songs that you can notice they're singing along, or at least the words are coming from their lips that they're 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 following the song uh, it, it really seems like uh, as a performer you've really um connected um you know there's one one lady that uh, she demands you know she's really really uh concerned that she has to sit right beside the piano mm-hmm. you know and uh and and then there, there's a uh, there's a fellow that had a musical career in the country and Western field. Unfortunately, he's blind and suffering early stages of dementia. He just enjoys sitting and, and uh, listening to me live, but also he's got his set of sing-along DVDs as well. So uh, I, I think the calming and, and uh, the calming effect that music has, if they're agitated and confused, and also uh for the performance, they're they're definitely zeroing in on on songs that they know the words and the melodies. So. Mm-hmm. Now, when you're performing for um, residents, are family members present as well? Yes, they are. 
And do you get yeah. response from them in terms of what they see? Uh, yes, very much so. Uh, the family members are like having more recreationists. Mm -hmm. You know, they add to the hand clapping, they add to the, to the energy level. And of course, they're delighted because perhaps um, earlier in the day, they found their parents uh, somewhat um, confused and and then all of a sudden they're seeing their parents in a, a different light mm -hmm. of being excited and energized and uh, well, it's just great when the family members come in and take part in the in in the uh, music oh very cool very cool I uh, you know I just remember with my mom had dementia for 30 years and we did some short um, little videos that are actually on our YouTube channel of just her coming alive even in her very young stages you know and she always liked music and I remember when she first went into the nursing home she was part of their choir that would go around and sing floor to floor and you know then as the disease uh, changed you know, things, she wasn't able to do that, but music still had a great effect on her until the very, very end of her life. And um, so powerful and yet so simple um, for us to be able to pull that in if we just recognize how important it is in our own everyday life. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's one of the mistakes that we make is not, not realizing, you know, taking, like everything else in our life, taking things for granted that we probably shouldn't. Um, <laughs> Yeah. You know when you when you mentioned uh, about the, the energizing um, the and the uh, family members and in community often they're just um, volunteers up in Ontario there are credits given to high school mm -hmm. students for uh -huh. volunteering uh, with um, elderly homes and uh, uh, long term care homes so it's actually a community credit that helps them advance in their schooling and so. Oftentimes, you'll have, let's say, four uh, recreationists that are uh, working at the home. You'll get um, a couple students and then, and then hopefully a dozen family members and, and just friends mm -hmm. uh, of, of the uh, uh, Alzheimer's uh, people. So, yeah, it, it, it really energizes the room. Now, these people also add to dancing. Uh -huh. Now, uh, yeah, and and to 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 see as the program progresses, uh, you, that you get uh, this energy level happening where uh, you know in the mood by Glenn Miller, mm -hmm. you know that song. Oh, oh yeah. And, and, and everybody up dancing, and and including the students. You've got someone that's 15 years old dancing with someone in their late 80s, and uh, it, it's really quite nice. Oh, yeah, that intergenerational impact is just so massive. Um, it, it's just, and it's so, it's so important to, to both sides. Well, actually, more than both sides, because even if it's a young person with an older person, that middle generation just sucks it up, too, and is just so proud of the, of the, yeah. inter, oh, of yeah. the interaction. Yeah. So, yeah, very, very neat. What are some of the um, favorite songs or, or most requested songs that you get from people? Well, the, the, on the country and western side, um, they, they like the Tennessee Waltz. Mm -hmm. um, I generally get a, a, a few requests for that one and a couple of the Charlie Prides, like Kiss an Angel, Good Morning, and, uh, and um, the Crystal Chandelier. Uh, they're popular. Johnny Cash songs are very popular. Uh -huh. uh, and, and Willie Nelson as well. Mm -hmm. Now, on the sort of pop side, it tends to be um, uh, Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. Uh, their songs like New York, New York, and, and Fly Me to the Moon, and, and then, um, uh, you know, Blue Spanish Eyes. Mm -hmm. And those, those are really up front is being requested quite often. And um, in the sing-along, you kind of go back to even before the 40s, and there's a lot of songs that are really planted uh, in, in people's minds, like uh, one that comes to mind uh, because Valentine's Day is a month away of boats, and it's Let Me Call You Sweetheart. And uh, it, when I'm performing that song, and just about every single person is singing along with me it, because it's 
it's so planted in their minds you know, and uh, let me call you sweetheart and ain't she sweet and uh, five foot two with eyes of blue and songs like that they're they're, they're uh, really popular Oh, you know, when as you're saying these titles, every single one of them is resonating with my mom and my dad. Every single one of them, yeah. you know. And they were, you know, mom died a couple of years ago at the age of 86. And I'm sure every generation has different songs that they that they click with and remember. But um, those songs were just so much fun because I, I mean, I can just picture the animation. Of, of both my parents with those songs. You know, my mom loved to dance and loved to sing, and my dad, you know, would get drug out onto the dance floor, you know, didn't really <laughs> want to be there but would go and um, yet would have a have a fabulous time in doing so. So I, I just, uh, like I said, just uh, talking with you and reminiscing is, is um, conjuring up just wonderful moments of joy for me, so I have to thank you for that. Um, wow. It's, it certainly is a pleasure talking about those songs, too. <laughs> now, not everybody is located in Ontario. Um, you know, we're down here in, in the U.S. How can people access um, your music? Do you travel, um, you know, for speaking engagements? Or, um, you know, how does that work? Or is it best for them to just order your DVDs and be able to see yeah. live that way? Yeah, I, I do my performances, and, and it sounds like a large number, but it isn't. It, I do 800 per year. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, and, and uh, really it isn't that many when you consider my normal days, three performances, but then I have days where I do two. Um, and um, uh, the best way, um, since I'm pretty well centered in southern Ontario, um, I go two hours anyway from my home base, which is Brantford, Ontario, and that's the home of the famous hockey player Wayne Gretzky. Uh-huh. And yeah, and the telephone was invented there by Alexander Graham Bell. So that's Brantford, Ontario. So I can get into Toronto to perform and uh, going west, uh, not as far as Windsor, but uh, that Windsor's across from Detroit. And then going up north about an hour and a half, there's so many opportunities to perform within uh, an hour and a half to two hours of Brantford there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, uh, for going outside that realm, I I seldom do, but it's not something that I I would not do. Uh, But to get the DVDs, um, which um, uh, the best thing is to visit the website, and um, the, the website is www.singalongwithjohndvds.com. Okay. Well, that is, yeah. that is wonderful. Now, I know that you have um, put together, um, you know, some package deals with a, a six sing-alongs um, that you've done. Can you kind of describe for people what they would get in that package? Yeah, um, for sure. There's um, uh, six DVDs, and now each DVD has the lyrics written just as as in a karaoke situation, but in larger print. And the lyrics are lit up as I progress singing. So um, the uh, the six DVDs. One is called Songs of the British Isles, mm-hmm. and uh, those. Uh, are kind of uh, songs out of the 30s and 40s and 50s and uh, and um, um, they're like Mull of Kintyre and and, uh, and and then the British Isles meaning also Ireland so there's some Irish ones like My Wild Irish Rose and uh, Scottish songs and uh, British pub songs mm-hmm. and uh, and so if you can picture uh, folks um uh, singing in a British pub, um, a lot of the songs that are on on the, uh, the songs of the British Isles. That's uh, uh, the, that that's kind of the repertoire there. Now, um, um, there's um, the best of the crooners, uh, and crooners are are the singers like Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra and 
Nat King Cole and Mel Torme and, uh, and some of the songs there um, are Blue Moon, Mel Torme, Route 66, Nat King Cole, and uh, The Sunny Side of the Street, Tony Bennett, I Love You for Sentimental Reasons, and that, of course, Dinah Shore, All of Me by, uh, by um, well, that, that was Sinatra and Doris Day. They did a, a, a duet on that one. Uh, I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter in Nat King Cole and Misty by Johnny Mathis. So, so those are the crooners, uh, uh, and it's just called Best of the Crooners. Okay. And uh, the most popular uh, um, two are the gospel and the crooners, okay? And on the gospel one, those are all songs that, that the senior folks have been singing since Sunday school. So it's a very important one. Uh, the Old Rugged Cross, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, How Great Thou Art, Holy, 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 uh, Onward Christian Soul here. Swing low, sweet chariot, just a closer walk with thee, and praise God from whom all blessings flow. So um, uh, the the gospel one's very important because a lot of the professional recreationists enjoy putting on the Sunday uh, um, church service in the home, Mm -hmm. but they're not comfortable with leading in the singing of the hymns. And so many of the recreationists just take this DVD and put on through the service three sins, uh, uh, three of the the uh, hymns, and and the words of course are right on the the DVD. So um, the uh, congregation in in the gospel service can just look up at the the TV monitor and, and sing along and uh, and that and. and yeah, so that the gospel and the crooners are the two most popular ones. Uh, we've just had a lot of fun with the Christmas celebration uh, leading up to Christmas, and um, uh, and that one did very well this year. Um, we were a little late getting to it the previous year, but uh, this year we had a lot of success with that one. And uh, and then rock and country. Uh, that's that's one that has uh, uh, kiss an angel good morning take these chains from my heart the green green grass of home San Antonio rose room full of roses green door he'll have to go and uh, please release me and, and several others very very well known uh, country songs so uh, um, yeah, uh, that's kind of a, a little bit of a description on the DVDs. Okay, well, that that's very helpful. Um, and again, as you were um, naming the songs and the, the genres, um, it was just interesting to, you know, kind of go back in time uh, with my own folks and um, relatives in terms of, uh, it just brought back a lot of, a lot of memories. There and I can yeah. and I can see you know for church services uh, in nursing homes or assisted livings or you know any senior center or any place really you know nobody wants to sing off key and so if they've got some beautiful music in the background the rest are are more easily to chime in and feel comfortable yeah. singing you know with that when you've got somebody leading the pack that's got a voice you know <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and I've yeah. actually seen it. It, it, you know, being being done in in um, now this was an actual retirement home, mm-hmm. um, uh, but uh, their church service there there would be about under thirty, maybe twenty five or thirty in the congregation, and the recreationists were putting it on. And now once a month they actually had a a uh, um, a minister from from a church come in, but the other three Sundays they had to do it themselves. And uh, it really made me feel good when when the DVD, the gospel DVD, came on and everybody was singing them. And uh, uh, one of, uh, this is very, very important to us, is one of the um, supporters who, who approves um, and promotes um, uh, our gospel CD, or DVD, sorry, is... Stan Means, and he's the president of Senior Ministry, 
the senior senior resource ministries and uh and they're from south carolina and uh and uh it's really good to have him on board uh, promoting uh uh our gospel dvd wonderful now um one of your partners i think that you worked with if i'm not um uh if i'm not mistaken was winter productions um can you give us a, a little bit more information um about winter productions yeah, and it's Roses in Winter, and uh, um, it's Elizabeth, uh, Dawn, and her husband, Dennis, and uh, they have uh, worked uh, uh, not only right from the very start on the production and um, uh, right through to to the sales and marketing, and uh, uh, they, they do uh, go to the conferences like the activity professionals conferences and and they uh market the the dvds at these and uh and that and uh couldn't want better partners let me tell you that they're just great to work with and uh um uh, yeah and now dennis is a retired uh high school teacher uh-huh. and yeah yeah and so this is new for him elizabeth's always been involved with uh with this uh, uh, type of, of thing, but she her background's marketing, so so it, it's uh, it's good there. Wonderful. Well, that's that's great. Um, is there a special story, something that that hit you, or maybe you've got a couple of them um, that you can share with our audience about when you were playing and something that you experienced and and saw in terms of uh, resident reaction. Yeah, this this was something that I I uh, I found very early, and, and as, as we were discussing, I was on on the circuit playing dance halls and taverns, and now now I, I was playing in in long term care and Alzheimer's day programs and and retirement homes, and this it, one thing that really was different was how all the uh, the attendees of the performance would line up and come up to you at the end of the performance and tell you what the performance, the songs meant to them, mm-hmm. and and uh, and you know basically tell you they enjoyed the music and hopefully hopefully you come again. Now you you just didn't get that type of reaction playing the the you know the rock and roll circuit it, it you know it, it wasn't anything like that as well before you start playing um everybody is ordered in into usually a theater style sitting uh and and they're very intent as to when you get started and um uh, whereas when you're playing on on the the road in dance halls, maybe only ten or fifteen percent of the uh, people in attendance are focused on on the performance. They're there for other reasons. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's that's interesting. Um, now, as far as you know, as, as the future, um, do you have any plans to do anything different, or are you comfortable, you know, in the space that you're in? You know, for now, I, I sure am, and 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 um, uh, for musicians out there that would like to get into this field, the, the uh, I'm, I'm speaking for the Ontario area. There are more and more facilities and. Um, uh, being built uh, for seniors, and there are more programs uh, for Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, all the time, I'm I'm being approached uh, uh, with new venues. <laughs> so no, I'm I'm pretty happy doing it right now. Now I I do also uh, fundraisers for churches and Rotary Club and and. Um, um, you know, this, uh, the Legion, we call it here, it's similar to AMVETS uh, in, in the States, um, uh, these type of fundraisers as well, you know. Okay, okay. Um, do you have any plans for more DVDs? Are you still, um, you know, working on some more music, or are you pretty satisfied with where you're at at this point with that? Or 
Yeah, I would say we are, but we are um, considering doing a second gospel CD, a DVD based on the um, um, the success of the first one, and we're kind of toying with the idea of doing a fifties, the music out of the fifties. Oh, okay. And yeah, so if we do two more, uh, there they, they might not be a two thousand and sixteen. Um, initiative, but not too far away. We we do plan on expanding. Uh huh. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, that's that's good to know. Um, you obviously enjoy entertaining at these uh, senior um, facilities. What do you find the most rewarding to you? Well, it's definitely uh, just seeing seeing people that perhaps. Um, don't get too much of a chance to um, to to be energized, you know. You know, you can imagine being in a facility all those hours, and then um, they they generally say that this is the highlight of their week, mm-hmm. is the musical performance. Not only mine, but the the other uh, performers that go in. They, they they circle it on their calendars, mm-hmm. and 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 they just can't wait and. Uh, and and I think that type of, of feedback is uh, um, is what I really thrive on. And um, um, you know, I mean, there's there's in all types of performances, whether it's with seniors or not, the performer does perform better when there's a lot of interaction and applause and and this type of thing. So yeah, that's what I enjoy. When I walk out of there, I feel feel like a million dollars and I really feel quite uh, um, quite happy about uh, about uh, the performance oh wonderful well that's great um, any any last uh, things that you want to give any last tips that you'd like to give to our audience at all and we'll make sure that they get your contact information again yeah well um, the DVDs are um, uh, featured in in several catalogs um, in the U.S. and and one in Australia, and uh, any of the recreationists out there mm-hmm. will um, uh, will know that uh, um, uh, SNS uh, is one of the catalogs that pretty well every recreationist has, mm-hmm. and uh, and so the DVDs are there, and um, uh, the the six DVDs are reviewed and approved by NC. Um, living in a nursing home. I used to just buy them and donate them. Um, And so can families go to these sites to purchase or does it have to go through a recreational therapist? No, they can go to the website and purchase them. And this is something that we really saw happening at Christmas time in a big way is is that uh, family members would buy uh, either the set or three or one, and then donate it to the uh, recreation department, and uh, that that was really, really nice. That was really great, and uh, and uh, uh, the only sometimes you lose track as to who's got them and who doesn't. <laughs> Hopefully, the majority of the places have them, and that and that whether they get them through the catalogs or or right from my performance or whether the recreationists buy them from the website or from one of the catalogs but uh, it's all working yep exactly well what i found was when i would you know play the music for mom um people would if we did it in her room people would just gravitate to her room and so then we yeah. decided you know we'll save a few for her room but the majority of them then we just brought out to you know the the general living room and dining room area where everyone could enjoy them and share them and and tap into them when they wanted. And uh, and we found, too, that 
you know, they left her units and they maneuvered throughout the, the whole uh, community. And, and as a family, we were fine with that. You know, we just wanted them yeah. in use. Um, that was, yeah, that was the goal. Sure. That was the goal. So, well, John, I appreciate your time today so much with us. Again, we've been talking with John Morehouse, who is a pianist and, um, and now are you a, a singer and songwriter or? Um, I do write music. Okay. And, uh, and, and I sing as well. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, you can see me in action singing and playing the piano on the sing along DVDs. Okay, great. And so again, the website would be www.singalongwithjohndvds, and that's with an S at the end, dot com. Again, that's www.singalongwithjohndvds.com. Or you can uh, contact him via email at rosesinwinter at, is it just mail.com? That's what I've got here in front of me. Or is it G- yes. Okay. Uh, we're so used to Gmail down here at the U.S. So uh, rosesinwinter yeah. at mail.com. Um, mm-hmm. And then do you also want to give out this phone number or not? I just always like to make sure. Sure, okay. by all means. Okay. Yeah. And phone number, if, if that is easier for you, is 519-442-9700. Zero one again. That's five one nine four four two nine seven one zero. Well, John, again, I have to thank you again so much for being with us. I, you know, I was before I let you go. I I do have to just um, read a couple of testimonials. I was kind of going through your information, and um, you just have some such nice, nice. Um, testimonials. Uh, One of them says, John's sing-alongs with the DVDs are such a valuable tool for engaging our residents and keeping them interested in our programs. Another says, as a library coordinator, I'm always looking for entertaining ideas to motivate seniors uh, to to life, and um, music plays a huge part in that. Um, We've got... um, where was it? There was one other one I wanted to make sure that I said. Oh, our residents love uh, Sing Along with John's DVDs. As soon as the DVDs start to play, everyone starts to sing, and they remain engaged for the entire DVD um, performance, which uh, that's just really highly unusual. And I think any uh, activities or recreation you know, party will tell you that um, keeping people engaged for that period of time is is not always an easy task, but music music makes it easier. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So, again, I thank you so much for your time with us today, John. Well, Lori, it was great talking to you and all, all the success uh, in the future. And uh, it was really my pleasure uh, being on uh, uh, on the program today. Okay, thank you so much, and stay warm up in Ontario. We'll we'll try to do the same down here in Minnesota. (laughs) Okay, and 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 the same with you. Stay warm. Okay, bye now. Okay, Um, for those of you that missed our last show, we had director um, Scott Cushenbaum on, and he was the film director of "You're Looking at Me Like I Still Live Here," a fabulous movie. Something that you might be interested in checking out. Um, Next week, we are going to be talking with um, people from Massachusetts, and we're going to be talking about uh, the dementia experience and what their Dementia Friendly Communities Initiative um, is looking like and what they've accomplished there. So I'm really excited to to hear what's going on out east. This morning on Dementia Chats, we had a, a great conversation with our experts who are diagnosed with dementia, and we talked about, and I'll be putting this on the blog hopefully later today yet, um, why people um, feel a need to argue if they really have dementia or not. And they, they get um, attacked sometimes and uh, by both others you know, with dementia and, uh, other, and, and other people who are not diagnosed with dementia. But people really question that, oh, you don't have it you know, because they look good. And the conversation is quite interesting on in what their feelings are um, when people um, make these kind of comments and how they react to them. So look for that, um, that video. It'll be posted on our YouTube as well. Uh, if you're interested in seeing an upcoming preview of His Neighbor Phil, we're going to be uh, doing a screening of that January 24th 
at Polar Ridge Senior Living in North St. Paul at 2 p.m. Again, that's January 24th at Polar Ridge Senior Living at 2 p.m. Uh, for a free screening of the Hollywood film, His Neighbor Phil. On the blog, we had some really interesting comments to a video I posted called The Drawer of Memory. And it's an animated film about memory loss. And um, some people were really sad. Some people were really upset. Others said it just hit the nail on the head. Um, and I, I got comments not only on the blog, but um, through Twitter, through LinkedIn, through Facebook. A lot of interaction. So it's a video that you might want to watch. There's also an article about a couple of ideas to save you time. One is just using a meeting planner. Um, for doctor's appointments. So you have everything in one spot when you go. can save a lot of time. Uh, the other was just a three-month calendar kind of helping you project what's going on in your life. Um, and then we also got a lot of comments on a poem called The Empty Chair, Caring for a Loved One with Dementia. And uh, last, I'm just going to uh, be reposting um, some information on what's going on with Wisconsin they are kind of leading the pact um, in doing some really cool things, and they're pulling together a documentary about the initiatives uh, going on in Wisconsin. So uh, that'll be going up yet this afternoon. Um, what else do I have to tell you? I think really that's about it. Um, it's still cold here. It really hasn't warmed up. He hasn't wet. Why it? <laughs> Why it's our board operator here, and he's just shaking his head at me. Anyways, you guys have a wonderful, warm week. And um, again, keep in mind the three tips that the memory chip te teaches you um, when you're interacting with someone with dementia. Uh, please focus on these. Are they safe? Are they happy? And are they pain-free? When you do that, both your lives are going to be a lot better. And you can access your memory chip on Alzheimer's uh, Speaks uh, just by becoming a member and then going to our tools and products. Thanks again. We'll talk to you next week, everyone. Well, hi, I'm Lori LeBay, and I wanted to tell you about Alzheimer's Speaks, which is another great podcast. You see, my own mother lived with dementia for 30 years, and I felt lost. Did you know every three seconds someone in the world is being diagnosed with dementia? Odds are it's going to hit your families too. We want to help you connect to services, products, tools, research, and stories so you can be prepared. Please subscribe to Alzheimer's Speaks on your favorite podcast platform.